What's going on, everybody? It's me, the PR. I am me coming at you guys with another episode of the Prime Nostalgia Podcast. And I am here with my co host, Lee Boy TV. Take it away. Yeah, I am Lee Boy TV. As he just said, hey, bro, you're supposed to send my intro to me, man. Let me introduce myself. No, I'm playing. Just kidding, Prime. <laughs> I ain't going to start off giving you a hard time like that. But I am Lee Boy, aka Lee Boy TV. What's up, people? Uh, today we have a very special guest, which. Uh, he he claimed we're calling him old or not. We're just saying he's a classic. He's a he's good. He's legendary. So we clean gotta boost him up. Clean it. Yeah, we gotta clean boost him up. up. Yeah. <laughs> <We> gotta <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, we do have Teron Brooks here with us today. Hey, claps clap around, around, clap clap around, up. insert the claps. Uh, what's going on? What's up? What's happening? What's, I'm I'm chilling. Yeah, I like that hat, man. That's nice. I just seen when you look down. Fresh, got to represent. Love yeah, that. Yeah, every day, all day, don't we? Exactly. <laughs> Now's the time like, to show your loyalty, show, you know, what side you want. No, I'm playing. You ain't got to show what side, but, you know, you down do. for our folks. You do. You do. <laughs> you, hey, you know I ain't what? mad. I ain't mad at it. Yeah. Hey, we didn't even, we're starting off, you know, I'm just saying, it's the human side. I mean, it's black lot. It's it's not even what side you're on. It's just the right thing to the right do. right thing to do. You know, exactly. just to support every, you know what's going on with the Asian community, what's going on in Palestine and Israel. It doesn't really matter, but and we all say that all lives matter. We get this, but it's just human. Just the, so we can never forget the, the lives that we hear about and those that we don't, man. So, yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Man. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely dope. Um, mm -hmm. Look, I'm going to just come out the gate swinging. Uh, okay. You gotta, you, you're just getting into podcasting. So yeah. we definitely have to talk about that. Uh, obviously, you guys don't know, uh, Teron has a podcast called Honest Answer. It's not even, it's not even like he's interviewing people about their careers. Just giving, he's asking questions. They're giving honest answers. And uh, you had Leon on, not obviously, not me. Oh, like, so yeah. my real name is Leon. Just so you know, it wasn't me. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. Uh, we I couldn't love... get you. We called your people, and they was uh, something. Yeah, it was. No, they they were talking about Lee Boy. You on Lee Boy? Nah, nah, nah that's way out yeah. your league. Look, <laughs> way out, yeah. way out. But nah, uh, yeah, your first episode had Leon on it. Mm. Uh, not to ask you about Leon, but just how was that experience of like reconnecting on like a platform instead of just you know just talking on the phone by yourselves? Well, I'm gonna be honest, man. I haven't talked to him in really like face to face or you know a long conversation probably since you know maybe social media or something. He's very generous and reposting things, and we kind of you know. But that was really like a reunion of of all kind of sorts, you know, and for him to be the first episode, for him to be so gracious to say, yes, I'm still kind of wilding out on that, you know, um, cause I had a dream to do this podcast about a couple years ago. And so he was the perfect first guest to kind of, you know, throw things off in a, in a great way. And it, it, when you listen, you'll read, Leon is a mystery, you know, he seems to be, you know, and uh, he seems to really protect that side of him also on, on purpose. Mm -hmm. But um, on the podcast, I think he gave some really, really honest, vulnerable yep. answers that people would find not necessarily surprising, but um, that's the whole point of the podcast. We're all the we're, we're all humans. We may be famous. We may be actors or whatever you do is, is not that essential. But who we are as, a, as people, we all have the same kind of fears or concerns or joys in our lives. And so that's why I want to do the podcast to not separate superstars or celebrities from all of us we all need inspiration we're all on a certain kind of journey and he was really uh cool to kind of reveal a little bit of his process on on the way yes like a, it we can give more praise to the episode just you know before we before we go down your guest list uh the episode with leon just one part that i like i'm not gonna give everything away uh the part where people were, uh his perception of him being like the lady killer he was like you don't know what it's like behind the scene, you don't know what I lost and all that. So that part, I really like, y'all definitely, I think should go just to listen to like the honest side of Leon, not just the, what you see in the media and how you perceive him. Cause he's just like, well, we, uh, let's just say he's a good looking guy. So everybody's going to assume off the bat, like he got it. He got everything in his pocket, but you know, so go listen to that. Yeah. Uh, he, but, he, he, uh, he kind of dispelled a lot of different, myths yeah. you know about himself so i was really glad to to talk to him about that and uh 
you know, a lot of people, they, they, they said they were listening for me, but they really were listening for him. So that's okay. It's fine. <laughs> well, I listen for both for you and for him. Uh, so you uh, obviously you wouldn't know this. I've been like following you for a for a long, long time, but closely a little before uh, co- uh, lockdown because you've been doing the karaoke stuff. Uh, you've been doing other stuff with the. Uh, I don't want to get the name the guy's name wrong. Is it Corey? Corey, yeah. Okay, so you've yeah. been doing stuff with Corey. Yeah. Bro. Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff that I've been following for a while. And uh so it's finally coming up to fruition here. So that's 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 good. Um would you mind telling everybody the other guests that you got coming up for your podcast? Yeah, I'll give a you couple names. I mean we have uh tomorrow, or I don't know when this is gonna air, but Crystal Lewis, she's one of my all time favorite dope singers. Crystal Lewis, we have uh, Tony Winters, uh, Stephanie J. Block, and Renee Elise Goldsberry from Hamilton. We have uh, Sheila E. is going to be my last episode of the season. So that was crazy. We have my best friend, Michael Swanson, who is an uh, executive with Universal. Um, who else do we have? Uh, we have Melinda Doolittle from American Idol. We have Rona Bennett from In Vogue. Ooh, Rona. Right. Uh, so we we got, I don't I'm I'm sure I miss some people but we you know and all these people I'm 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 friends with I know I know these people mm-hmm. but I it, it ended up being like a conversation on the phone uh, it, as opposed to like a serious kind of podcast and I love yeah. the way it was no trickery involved I mean I didn't tell them what the questions were but it just like you know the energy was just like comfortable yeah. for them to answer in in an honest way and they all did so yeah you got to check out the whole every Tuesday. Yes, every Tuesday. Um, just for a quick question, just to piggyback, why did you decide to do it in like eleven episodes through like seasons? Was that your thing of like I might be busy, so it's better to do it in seasons or it just? Yeah, well, honestly, I don't know if it was it was like calculated, but I knew that for the busyness, like I I did all those episodes within two or three weeks, um, okay. so I could just roll them out. Um, and, um, because of my busyness, I wanted to do it, uh, in seasons. So I'll probably do the second season starting in October. Um, um, and we're just trying it out, man. You know, I want to see what people want to hear and who wants to be involved with it. So I've always had the dream of doing it, man. I'm a talker people, you know, um, so that just comes naturally, probably even more than singing. So anytime I can inspire other people to he to have a perspective of what the game is and how to pursue their dreams and how we all have to go through those same valleys and those same hills, man, I'm all for that because we forget, you know, when we get to where we think we want to be, we forget some of the struggles and the sacrifices and other people don't see that. They just see Leon and go, oh, you know, he just got... There's a lot of hard work. That's what I wanted to really kind of convey with Leon. It seems effortless, but he works hard, you know, Uh, and he's dedicated to bring role after role after role. So um, it's something that, you know, you want to show people that especially young people now, you know, everyone just thinks it's really fast. I'm going to be famous. I'm going to make a lot of money. All I got to do is this. And in some cases, they see examples of how it happens so fast, but there's nothing that you can keep so fast if you do not work at it you'll get it but will you be able to have a career like leon after you know be be really valued for good quality work or are you just famous you know mm-hmm. so um yeah i think it's just uh i put it in the the seasons just to give me a little bit of a break i suppose and make sure that it was out there and nothing would like interfere with it okay uh now, I just want to yes. say, too, that I love the story of you reconnecting with him on the pod. Like, um, I, I used to be a cast member of all that, and I hadn't seen Keenan for 20 years. And so we had that similar uh, reunion right there live for people to see. And it's really just a moment that, you know, fans like us really cherish because it shows the humanity between the two of you guys. So uh, I'm excited. I haven't heard it yet. I know Prime's like, he was like, bro, you got to listen to this. But I got a couple kids, so I just need to space out some time. But I will definitely get into him with that. In fact, me and my mom going to sit around and listen to it after uh, she watches this one. Okay. Because <laughs> she's okay. a big right. fan, too. <laughs> That's great. Um, now, 
I'm I don't want to say I'm jealous, but I'm kind of jealous. You jealous? You didn't you didn't <laughs> use the Lion King background for us or the the hairspray background? Uh, What's up? Like oh, oh <laughs> it's right there. Wait wait wait. Oh, I'm about where, to say, is where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, yeah, I'm about to say. There other, you go. There you, you want me go. To move <laughs> over. <laughs> no, you don't have to. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Just saying. we. It's the same room, bro. You know. Yeah. Right. Nah. Now, I'm talking about my light. You know. <laughs> other, other interviews, I'll be like, "Oh, that's cool. He got the Lion King down there." So I'm like, oh, okay. "This is the only room my wife lets me have my. It's all about me. I'm just everything else. She's like, I don't want to see it. Uh, we know temptation. We know. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. This is, she tired this is, of hearing about the damn this temptation. Is, this though. is the shrine. This is the shrine area. <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> that is dope. But uh, so should we I, hop into some Lion King talk? Because I got a question. I mean, all right, cool. Go I want to know about the audition process for you in Lion King. Cause I, I mentioned that I used to do this acting thing. I believe I auditioned for Young Simba back in LA, like maybe in might have been the mid to late nineties. I'm not sure. What was that process like for you? Was it a a bunch of people in a room that had you singing songs in front of people and dancing, or uh, just just let us know how it went and how you ended ended up getting on the cast? Cause that's a great feat. Well, man, you know, it took about seven auditions. It was not an easy thing. In my mind, I'm like, it's a lion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he sings some songs, you know what I mean? But it was, Disney didn't play, you know what I mean? I actually um, got myself to, uh, was it San Francisco? I, I, I went to so many different auditions, but um, I just wouldn't say, no, I wouldn't accept no. There's some, certain things that you uh, accept, you know, you hear no and you go, but, but Lion King, I felt, and there was not that many different things in my life where I felt like, no, I'm going to be in this show. So I persevered through all those auditions. Um, and, you know, there's the casting people there. Maybe there's like five people there. I think by the time that I got into Lion King on Broadway, it was between the L.A. Ver Ver company and the, the Broadway company. And I was thinking, even though I would love to go to Broadway because it was my first Broadway show, man, if I could just be at home you know, mm. right down the street, that would be amazing. But they ended up switching me and a friend of mine, he came to LA, he was from New York, and then they they had me go to, for my first Broadway experience. And man, a lot of my auditions, the, I, I end up booking things when they're not really paying attention, if that makes sense. Like the ones that I work the hardest, I don't get. And then the ones that I just walk in or something, those are the ones you get, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I love that story because it, I did have to persevere. I did not accept no for that particular job. Um, and for that to be my first Broadway show was actually Jesus Christ Superstar. And then I ended up doing that film with Renee, uh, All About You uh, with Christine Swanson. And I ended up not going to Broadway thinking, working with Ricky Minor and you know, doing another feature film would be something that I would wanna do and Broadway would always kind of be there. So um, it was fortunate that Lion King was the first job. And then, I don't know if you know the story, after I was in, in Broadway, I came home and did it for a year and a half here in LA. So I got to do mm. it for, for a while. Um, but yeah, amazing experience, you know, and uh, very physical. And, um, you know, imagine. maybe I was salty that I didn't get in the job. I never saw it. I wasn't lucky enough or maybe I was just too salty to actually buy the ticket and go up there. I had a, a question about some of the songs that you may have sung, because in the in the movie, um, I guess teenage or mid uh, age Simba sings just the line in Hakuna Matata. Does right. he have his own song in the actual play? He actually does, man. In the play, it's, the song is called Endless Night. It's the most incredible experience because he's the only one on stage. And if you're playing a lead on Broadway or the lead in anything, you know, you know, of course, if you have your own song or whatever, but everyone's off stage but you. And you're singing this song called Endless Night, a beautiful song that's not in the cartoon, you know, animated mm -hmm. version. So there is a moment where um, Simba just sings you know i was gonna I mean? say they can't they can't let that voice go to waste with just one line out of hakuna they got oh get no, you no, up no, on stage, no. Boy. <laughs> no 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 yes, we, we we do a little bit more um so that was fortunate the interesting about that song though bro is that at the end of the song uh he, he i hold a note that the that is not supposed to have applause on top of it so <laughs> you imagine doing your song and then nobody can clap <laughs> <you know? laughs> Uh, because it's not supposed to happen in the in the way that the show goes, but uh, it was a good experience, man. Good experience. Great people, you know. Our people, you know. How many shows? They're they're doing it now, 
but there's not that many shows where you look around and it's stacked with, you know, brothers and sisters that look like you, you know, and I hope we continue to move forward where that's not the exception or the Hamilton is, I hope we continue to move forward because um, it's just, we have so many stories to tell. So, so much talent out there that needs a, needs a place to be. <laughs> yeah, there, uh, oh God, I, look, so I, I, in order for this interview, I, I watched a lot of footage, so if I just start going off on of every video I've seen, my bad, but, um, I seen a video like last week or maybe week before last. You did like a medley of, of songs. So you sung Circle of Life. Ah. Can you feel the love tonight? Which I love your your Circle of Life sounds like so much like the like the, the, the tone of your voice. You did what do you do? Just my imagination. You did tomorrow and you did Yeah. Another song. I can't remember what. I'm like, yeah, that. You, ah, you did, you, you did yeah, a great if, job. You if you guys are not in tune with this guy's voice, I mean, yeah. that's what – I'm not going to say that's what got you to where you are, but that is one of your original passions. Um, w- were you classically trained to be, like, a, 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 in musical theater as, like, a Broadway singer? Were you looking to be an artist, or did acting come first for you? Like, what was your original training like? Man, I mean, I was, like, a – started in church, everybody sings in church, shy kid. I mean, it's just an amazing that I'm even doing what I'm doing because I was so shy, didn't like people, you know? And so, it, you're, I mean, I think your purpose catches up with you and I went to a performing arts high school. So I think if I, with all those mentors and the teachers and when somebody sees something in you that you don't see in yourself, they can bring it out. And so the, people were just saying, yeah, you sing well, but like, there was no stage presence, you know, it was just like me singing and it probably came out, sounded all right. But they said, if you take the acting and do some of the dancing and just get some, it'll help your singing. Mm-hmm. I don't think I ever thought I'm going to be on Broadway or I'm going to do some movies. I wanted to win a Grammy. I wanted to get a record deal. I wanted to be an artist. I, I did. Um, but I went about it kind of a roundabout way and the acting really took off where people really didn't know that I sang. So in The Temptations, I sang 90%, 95% of all of the vocals that people still don't know if it's me or Eddie. Eddie sang, we used one song. And then, nice. people, and then people think that I sound like Eddie, so they don't know if you go hear my music, how di- similar, but I, we, we're still different, you know? Yeah. Um, but the singing was the foundation. I, I studied with Stevie Wonder's coach uh, when I was like 13, 14, young. Um, but not really. I think, it, you know, I'm going to give God props. This is like a God-given gift um, and being able to merge to do Broadway and other kind of things has always been my dream. That's why the what you're talking about is a record I did called The Soul of Broadway, where we took Broadway songs mm-hmm. and we kind of rebelliously kind of tricked them out. So, you know, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I don't, I don't go to those Broadway shows. It's corny. It's whatever. And I said, well, what if I took these songs, these anthems, and did them in my style and presented it to you in a different kind of package? What happens then? And that's exactly yeah. what we did. So some of those songs that you're hearing is just my interpretation because there's nothing like musical theater. Those lyrics and those songs and those anthems that are iconic and really touch everybody. Um, whether you don't like the instrumentation or the style of the sh- you know, show, we took it out of the character of the show. And I started to just relay it to my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Circle of Life is like, what's happening in these streets? We're all the same. You know? So if you sing it with a different connotation you know, and a different, the sun will come out tomorrow, that little you know, uh, curly hair, redhead, she's saying the sun will come out tomorrow. No, it's COVID. Like, are we coming out tomorrow? Will there be a better day? So you kind of apply those things I'm all about inspiration. I'm not gonna do nothing if it's not going to inspire people or lift people up. It's just not worth it for me, you know, so. I gotta give you props though, of the the arrangement style of the, the, the way you change these songs is great. Uh, just my imagination is like very upbeat, up-tempo, different than what you normally see. Uh, tomorrow, you, you got mad like at that? I, I wanna know if you were mad, cause I didn't, First of all, it took me a while to do a, a Temptation song, and I knew everybody was expecting. And then when I flipped it, I was like, are people going to be mad? Because it's not the the, re- the regular version. I mean, I will say since it's your own interpretation, and they can't be mad at it, and you're still doing the falsetto, so they can't really be mad at it. And plus, it's like it goes well together. Yeah. It's not like it's not like you're just, just my imagine. Like, you're not holding it. You're not, you're, 
<laughs> doing it your yeah. tone. And so I don't have a problem with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I like the uh, B. I like the okay. tomorrow cool, that cool. you done, you done added the little uh drum beat to tomorrow you know you gotta mm-hmm. you don't live it up switch it up yeah yes. Yes. <laughs> who knew you can jam to tomorrow <laughs> yeah so so yeah you you uh you took these songs made great yeah. arrangements out of all of them so. i think the that's the point of being an artist right if you're an artist you have to step out there knowing that people might not like it right so if you're an artist you're not trying you want to make people happy you know but you really have to listen to your own voice, you know what I mean? And do things that are subjective. Some people like it, some people may not, you know? So it took me a long time to discover that and and, 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 and appreciate that because there's some things that I don't like, right? So we, <laughs> it's all right, you know, but to, to always kind of try to make everybody happy and fit in this kind of safe space is not really the way that a true artist should really convey what they feel, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, might as well get into the big meeting grits is tomorrow. Uh, I know, I know the story about you in the shower and thinking about the song and all that. But would you mind just retelling the story just for this show for these fans uh, of yours? Just oh to yeah. Reiterate. Well, like I said, we did this this Broadway album. We call it soulful. I I call it soul soul music doesn't mean color, doesn't mean riffs, doesn't mean I got soul. It means the soul of how you connect with people. That's how I say what soul music is, whatever color you are, whatever you do. So we wanted to change these songs and bring them in depth to to soul in, in, in relation to people. And man, we were done with the record and I had this idea in the shower about flipping the chorus to make it a little bit gospel or like churchy or whatever. I was like, man, this might be a cool idea for the record, but the record was done. So the the story is like, I had an hour in the studio to decide if I was going to put this song on the record or if we were going to go with the other song that we had recorded. And me and the team, we looked at each other and they was like, you got an hour. So I I recorded that, the, the original version in an hour, and it was the last song added to the record. Now to speed up to everybody, if if you don't know what's going on, I got distribution by Mercia Records, um, yes. Sony the Orchid. So we're releasing the new version of that record in 2019 in the fall of 2021. And the new version of Tomorrow, plus my second sing- single, Something's Coming from West Side Story is coming out. So we kind of elevated, what you're hearing now tomorrow is an elevated version of like a last minute, like, let's put that on the record. And then the record company, they were the ones that said that should be the first single. So imagine if it wasn't even on the record. And yeah. then I don't know if you heard this, but in the Annie musical, yeah, Tomorrow was the last song mm-hmm. that was added to the to the uh, show. It was just uh, a, um, what do you call it? It's just like a song it, people change it pretty much. Yeah, it was a filler. They were like, put the girl out there and sing the song. And then it's now it's a worldwide anthem so there was some like synergy in that too so and not knowing that COVID was going to happen and all this was going to happen that the song really would be a good offering for people you know as we step into you know whatever we're going to move forward in so pretty proud of it and when the record company got a hold of it you know you're like when you make versions of songs you 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 kind of love what you did and you're like wow are they gonna change it so much, or how the how is this collaboration process gonna be? I was so excited about what I heard from my version to the new version that it kept the elements of our arrangement, um, and then took it to a whole nother level. So, yeah, man, just so great seeing you know a person that looks like us, like so involved, and in, uh, you know being so having so much such a great resume within uh, Broadway and also just musical in general, musicals in general, because it sounds like you've been in a part of so many different classical musicals, whether we've seen them or, or not. And I know one that's huge on your resume is obviously Hairspray, uh, which is funny because in the in the movie version, uh, Penny is played by Amanda Bynes, which was also a cast member of mine. We had, a, sorry, I always make it about me, uh, Prime is looking <laughs> But look, we had a similar relationship where I was kind of her seaweed. Look, uh, yep, yep, <laughs> he was 10, yep. 11 years old. But uh, yeah, you play like one of the original seaweeds. Um, 
can you tell us about like when you got when you joined the cast and if you were the original seaweed because it's kind of a little bit hazy online like figuring out oh yeah no 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 i was not the original seaweed um um cory cory was the original seaweed on broadway but Mm -hmm. i was the first it was the first national tour so i was the first first seaweed after broadway to do the tour um and then i ended up going on broadway for a little while um, so, so that's probably the confusion. I was the first one you saw after um, Corey on Broadway um, to do it. So, and that was just amazing. I, I had gotten married in May and went on tour in July for a year. So my first year of marriage was just going all over these places and doing this show that brought so many people joy because you're dancing and you're hearing these songs, but with the social um, justice themes, you know, mm-hmm. and the race relation themes in the show, you're laughing and it's funny, but it's like, oh, did they say that? Oh, did they do that? You know, um, so anything that I do brings awareness in some kind of capacity. So that was just probably mo- one of the most fun I've had, fun times on stage. Because I always say like when we're tired or sick, you just couldn't help <laughs> you dancing and singing. That joy was just infectious every single night. So um, I'm very fortunate, like you said earlier, too, and I tell young people or people in general, you know, you have 10 fingers and 10 toes, right? So you have a primary talent, maybe you have a primary gift, but you don't know for sure I'm a singer. And that's all you're going to do when you know you can write and do all these other things. Put all those things together, because like I said earlier, if I had not ventured into acting and trying to just get a record deal, I would have just been, you would have never heard from me, you know? So you kind of have to, you know, prioritize things, but use all of your special skills because they kind of go, they can go hand in hand. And um, so I'm very fortunate with the podcast. I'm an author. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm a Jamaican. No, I mean, I just try to do as much as much as they say. They got a whole bunch of jobs. Look, they got a whole (laughs) bunch of jobs. I understand that, you know, Uh, and I'm not waiting for nobody to give me a job. That's another thing. I I audition and, you know, if there's a movie or something out there, cool. But I'm going to start creating my own content like you guys are doing. And uh, so you don't have to wait on nobody, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, is Hairspray what you got uh, the Ovation nominee for? No, the Ovation nominee. Well, I got an NAACP uh, okay, award okay. Uh, nomination for Hairspray for Seaweed, and then I got uh, the Ovations for Sweet Charity, which I always okay. like. Okay. Because uh, Sweet Charity, I played, it's a Sammy, Sammy Davis role in the movie, uh, Sweet mm-hmm. Charity, but I'm only on stage for seven minutes. So when my agent was like, you got a nomination I'm like, for seven minutes. <laughs> uh, it's, that's a pretty cool thing. Um, but that, yeah, sweet charity. That's dope. That's dope. Uh, Libra, you got anything you want to add before we go into the break? Man, no, nah, it's just, like you said, it's just great. You know, you, you've carved a real lane for yourself, like uh, being able to, you know, to play some of these historic people within soul music and stuff. Like you just said, you, you did seven minutes of, uh, of a Sammy Davis type character. And, um, you know, I'm just happy for you, man. So congratulations on being able to carve that lane and, and make it a career where some people may not have been able to develop that. So it's just a kudos to your hard work and uh, dedication to your craft and people see something in you that the same way we see it, man, like I said, we're fans. Uh, you got something special and keep, keep, um, keep, keep attacking it and keep uh, monopolizing on that. I appreciate that so much, man. It's, if I can do it, you can do it. That's the message. You know what I mean? Cause I know where I come from and I know the odds and the obstacles and, I, and I'm very grateful because um, I just didn't arrive. There's a lot of things that I had to go through to get here. And so I'm always like, yo, if, if, if you're inspired by me, let me tell you that you can do it too, you know? Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's corny and it's, it's when you say don't give up, but it's true. Just don't give up. Just keep on doing it, you know? Keep on trucking, baby. Right there. It's right there. Look. <laughs> Oh, got to get your love, baby. Mm-hmm. Look, look, don't get me jamming. Look, I will act like I'm, I will be background in the temptations. I can do that. Look, so before we get into that talk, before we get ready to talk about the temptations and all that stuff, we're gonna go on break. And, um, is there any song you want us to play during break tomorrow or any song you want us to yeah, play? Yeah, why don't you play that? Play a little bit okay. of t- when the when the beat comes in. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Well, look, on the break, we're going to play tomorrow, and y'all enjoy it. I got to enjoy it. Y'all got to go 
Check out the Soul of Broadway, and we'll be back after this break. Come on, man. out tomorrow bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun all right all right we're back on the prime nostalgia podcast it's me lee boy tv i'm with my co-host look i'm calling him the co-host now prime p-r-i-m-e and we've got us extra special guests to Ron Brooks, who you guys should know from his story career over decades, and he's still doing his thing today. In fact, you guys just heard his uh, his newest venture, um, so so definitely go check out his, his new music. But it's time, man. This is what we've before been... Before we get into it... What? What's up? Because you know it, I'm I anxious. Small, I got a small tidbit that I just remembered. You always got some. Correct me. Yeah, well, y'all, correct me if I'm wrong. Were you... In the Michael Jackson Super Bowl performance, I was. I was a okay. kid. I was singing okay. "Feel the World." Yeah, I was. See, see I, I, did, I, I didn't see. meet. I didn't meet Michael, but I, I did. I was a few feet from him. Uh, yeah, that was probably. I guess that was my first television uh, experience singing with that all those kids. Yeah, yeah. and just like I said, a storied, historic career that this man has. So just another accolade that Prime knows. What else you know, Prime? Come on now, yeah, just break know, it down. I know, I know you. I'm like the king of the stars. So I know these small things that for no reason, like all right, claim uh, your crown, King. Okay. Yeah, see if I got some residuals out there. Do you know something? Ooh, I don't know. That's the real test. Look, right, yeah. Yeah, 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 you gotta take that up with the winning people. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean. Lee Boy, you alluded to it earlier, so I guess we might as well just get on into it. Let's talk about the Temptations movie, NBC series that, obviously, this guy here with us won an award for, by the way, so that's always a good thing, but Lee Boy, bring us in. Sure. I mean, my first question would be, um, have you ever been... Have you ever been confused for an actual member of the Temptations? Have people thought because they do revolve the members? There's some young guys in there, and and if not, would you ever consider being a member of the Temptations? <laughs> maybe years down the line, because I mean, your I voice is just so perfect. People, you know, um, like you said, they didn't they didn't know that you were actually singing, playing at, at Eddie Kendricks, and um, so do you see that as possibly a part of your uh, career in the in the future? Man, uh, you're gonna put me on the spot. <laughs> I'm gonna just say he knows how to get me started because I. Um, I but I'm gonna answer you. I'm gonna give you my answer. Because... I asked the t- is it? I don't know if it was a tough question. I just asked the. No, exactly no, the I, I've never here. gotten mistaken for one of the temptations. I think a lot of the young people, uh, you know, think think we are or something like that, or just you know, it was just well done. The casting was so well done. I'm not Eddie Kendricks. There's no, and when you in your car with your mama and you hear his voice. It's so vintage. There's nothing that I could have done to touch what that was. He was such an icon in that age. Everybody's falsetto right now. But back then, just to hear that voice out of the blue was very, very uh, groundbreaking. And we can't take anything away from them. So, And there's there's some members in the group prior, uh, the Theo Peoples and, you know, Ooh, Ron Theo. Tyson. And, you know, Ron Tyson. Bring it. Come those on. Are, those, Keep are, going. <laughs> those are legends, you know. So, yeah. But I want to say which I probably shouldn't, you know, there's always a controversy on the temptations and, and moving on and how many mm-hmm. groups there have been. I'm going I'm to be on record and say, there's nothing like the original temptations. To answer your question, I don't know if I would be, maybe because I'm so in awe, I, 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 you know, I guess if they asked me, you want to be one of the temptations, would I say no? But I just feel like that's something very sacred and special, you know? Um, no, yeah. But wait, before you go on, I'll say the reason why I had to ask that question is because to our generation, like you kind of alluded to, you guys really were the Temptations, and that's that happens with a lot of movies, yeah. Uh, especially yeah. for younger people, we're like, no, nah, those those are the yeah. guys right there. They don't even know what the old yeah. guys looked like or 
sometimes what they sounded like other than hearing them on the radio, but you guys really brought it to life. That's a high compliment. I really appreciate that. I think that you have to do your research if you're young and go see what, what we stole, what we took what, from, what we were inspired from. And then uh, the, the, the success that we were able to capture so many people's hearts as the temptations, it was the goal, man. There's no way we could have done this. If we didn't rehearse, if we didn't have the steps right, Forget singing and, and acting and all that. If we didn't look like the Temptations or have the chemistry, it, we wouldn't be talking about it today, you know. I uh, might as well get this question out of the way early. How have y'all never even done a performance like live? Just for just for nostalgia people, right? And was there ever anything considered like a something to Get well, the rest of them can't sing. That like, uh, what, what, uh Tara, that's wrong. Like, Tara can sing lead, and they can just play a backtrack. Honestly, <laughs> like, I mean, I, I would really like. Just, you know how many, how much people would get excited just for seeing them together? I believe it. Somebody movie. needs to organize it. I'm gonna tell like, you, I'm not, you know, I'm not the one saying no, but yeah. someone needs to. I think it, even if we did a Q and A, I think we celebrated 20 years. I'm still waiting for some kind of thing to come together and 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 highlight that. <laughs> But, you know, with the success of the Broadway show, Temptations, and there's some other things going on, um, I'll say I, I would be there in a heartbeat. That I would, would be, there be in a heartbeat. That would definitely be dope, because they did it with the five heartbeats. They did, like, a anniversary special time. Yeah. performance type of thing. I'm like, you know how many you know how many people would fall over for the Temptations? Not to say that the five heartbeats is not good anything, but, like, the Temptations movie is so classic with his lines and the scenes and it's like... People just go crazy. I've been, I've been advocate. Somebody would make a lot of money if they want to yes. organize it. I, yes. I don't know, you know, um, and 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 I I will say that the the brotherhood between me and the other guys that would not be the reason why we wouldn't do it because we all pretty much respect each other whether we talk to each other all the time. Um, I don't think anybody would be opposed to that. So the, you know, I want to squash any rumors that we wouldn't come together. I just think it's not hasn't been organized. You know. Yeah. Uh, just. Like a like now I want I want to put it on everybody to say like a week of practice. Give them like two days of practice, like a BT awards performance or something <laughs> for like the anniversary of the movie. Y'all mean to tell me people wouldn't pay for that? Oh, come on. All right. Sorry, I had to go on a small rant. And, and wait, you brought it up. You brought up the name. You know what I'm about to say. Five heartbeats. <laughs> now we have a, a big rivalry within the podcast, you know, a huge <laughs> Five Heartbeats fans. It's the way we have a rivalry. Is there any rivalry between you? Obviously, you have Leon that's on both casts. Is there anything behind the scenes where you guys kind of trash the Five Heartbeats or you guys have had any type of uh, <laughs> any type no. of street quarrel y'all did uh, <laughs> in the no, back alley? I, mean, I don't think so at all. I think they're two similar experiences, but different. And I think the five heartbeats, since it's not an original, those that's not real people, right. right? You have to give it to Robert Townsend for the mm -hmm. creation and the inspiration that he made with those characters. But the Temptations, sorry, ah, that's, so look. <laughs> no, we hear that's, we hear what's wrong. Look, look, look no, I'm just saying down. those <laughs> those were the iconic moments of your life. That's the that's soundtrack right. to your life. That's exactly. to, to, so to to say one is better than the other. Which is a problem, I also think, which I'm not saying is your fault. Mm -hmm. uh, there's enough for every black, that's enough. There's enough for all of us to appreciate and love what that is. I think it's fun for people. I've seen the things on Instagram A, it's the temptations, or yeah. B, it's the <laughs> yeah, yes. uh, I've seen all that, you know, but I, I, there's nothing, never been. I did a movie with Choir Boy, you know, with uh, um, Tico Wells, and he's he's amazing. There's enough for everybody, but I do think those are two similar. It seems like they're two similar movies to be pitted against each other. But there's two. There's a truth. There's a real thing, and then there's a, an imaginary uh, a story there. And um, I'm glad to be a part of both of that history, just on the same page. So. And I think a lot of it has to do, obviously, Leon's in both. But then the characters, David Ruffin and Eddie Kane, even though they're not both Leon, they have very similar stories that people like attach themselves to. Uh, but with that, do you have a favorite um, musical biopic or biopic um, outside of The Temptations? Oh, man, that's a great question. Um 
this is a trap. I'm just let you know that. Why? Right. Oh, it? It's not a trap. Uh, no, because <laughs> no, I know, I know what he's No, doing. you don't know what I'm about to All do, right. man. You don't right. know. All right. I know you well enough, but let's go. Let's go. Uh, I don't. I can't. I, well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm. I'm looking forward to the Jennifer Hudson Aretha Franklin. I okay. know that's not out okay. yet, but I am looking forward to to that one but you know, um we talk as, about them a lot so i'll say like some of the best ones that we've talked about are obviously the michael jackson american dream um and then you know like what's love got to do with what's love got to do with it i probably classic one yeah that yeah. one's forever you know in history so yeah and uh get up wasn't bad Chad yeah. Was yeah that was that, that per- you cannot do james brown and fake the funk and get up there and and that boy had learned all of that choreography and committed himself to that role. So for that alone, whether it was one of the best movies of all time, that was one of the best performances. Chad would, um, and he's he's exceptional, you know. Um, so I would put a, I would put that up there too, as far as the ones of me enjoying as an actor, going like that yes. person really dedicated themselves to that role, you know. And uh, while we're on this topic, might as well. Who would you want? to see have a biopic that just haven't gotten their flowers. Well, Sam Cooke, I mean, I, I, mm. I my friend Leslie yeah. played Sam Cooke in, in, in a night in Miami. Night and I've Miami. always, I've always wanted to play Sam Cooke. I've always, always, um, but I would love to see a full movie devoted to Sam, a full movie, okay. uh, as well as Marvin Gaye, you know, of course those, okay. and, and it's been toted around that those are in the works and development and you have the rights and the families and the estates and all that to try to get it together. But Sam Cooke and Marvin Gaye, a full movie devoted to them would be amazing. Okay. And then with songs like Change Gonna Come and uh, What's Going On, that would be like perfect for the times for either one of them. So kudos to that. Yeah. Uh, well, I feel like we I feel like we went into the Temptations movie without talking about no, it. No, we gotta get so back into gonna, it. Yeah, yeah we're gonna go back into <laughs> it. Um I'm gonna just talk about your portrayal of Eddie Kendricks. For me, studying I've studied each member, well not each, but I've studied multiple members, and I would say your uh portrayal of Eddie Kendricks and the evolution of Eddie Kendricks. People don't know. If you guys don't know in the beginning when Eddie was dancing, it was kinda stiff. So your portrayal in the beginning songs, it was kinda stiff and then like Close to the reunion, all you were kind of, you know, I just, I just, just small things like that of portrayals of people that I really enjoyed. Uh, I'm just gonna say you did a good job, like, I yeah, and not just the dancing, but then also just his persona. Because at first, like, yeah, he was like, too. yeah, he was like the meek guy that was like kind of just willing to do what he could do. But then once he got a taste of the fame, he was like, nah, I'm Eddie out here. <laughs> um, how how was that? And and you know what? Actually, I have an actual follow up question to that. Do you has um, has playing that character Eddie and like the straightness? Because we remember, I think a lot of him just being kind of straight laced. Has that affected your you know your casting outside of the Temptations movie? Do you think? Uh, I'm not sure. I think um, to be humble, I, I I was born to play Eddie Kendrick, so it wasn't a stretch. You know, I auditioned for Paul. That's the story everyone knows. I auditioned for Paul. And then Suzanne DePass was like, no, nah, you're Eddie Kendricks. Um, and we have those similarities. I mean, uh, Eddie was ride or die. You know what I mean? He was skeptical about coming into this group. I don't know if he was trying to be famous or not, but he, Paul was his best friend. And he was like, we, and so when Paul, well, they're trying to get Paul out the picture, he, you see him kind of rise up from this shy, meek person to like, no, what, what's just and what's right? He stood up to Otis. He, you know, he stood up for his friend David, even though David had all those problems. Um, so there's a lot of similarities between, I think, Eddie and myself in that way. But it's, it's to your question, as far as casting, um, I choose the roles that I want to be a part of. So I have most often said no to many things than yes, because I have a responsibility between me and what I would like to do for more inspirational types of things. So mm. um, it may have seemed to like the general public, like where's Ron, he hasn't done this or this, this or that. Um, some of that has been by choice, you know? Um, 
Yeah, so, you have a, a, a yeah. Well, having this iconic role, you have a resume to uphold to. You can't take no steps backwards. Like just to put it like like you said, you have a huge responsibility to the public to, to you know remain positive and the way that people see you. Uh, well, not a responsibility, but you like you said by choice, you want to continue in that vein. So thank you for that. That's nice. That's nice to yeah. hear. I appreciate it. I was 23 when I did that movie. So you can imagine after that's over, you're sitting here thinking everything's going to be handed to you or you about to blow up or whatever. And the, the reality is it, it did not. It did not. I had to search and find and pivot and go to different ways of my career. And, um, and then the Broadway things and other things started to happen. So, you know, it's, it's, it's been an incredible ride, but you, I'm in the front seat of that driver's seat of what that is. And so Eddie Kendricks was a gift to remind me that anything is possible. That's what I tell people. So when I get when I get down or whatever, I'm like, no, 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 no. You were picked. And I, if I told you everybody that was there, every black actor that was there, you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you were picked. So it always humbles me when I'm moving forward in my career to remember the, that moment. You know, that, that's what the temptation means for me. Not just doing it, just like, hey, anything is possible, you know. And look, can we talk about the success though? Because like everyone, like I was young as hell, but when the commercials came on that this was going to be like, it was a multi-night like mini series, right? And, you know, you know, everybody was just thrilled to see it come out, especially in the church community. I remember everybody at church like, oh, we're going to watch The Temptations tonight and we're going to talk about it on Sunday, right? But what was it like, uh, you know, when it first aired and I'm sure you started getting recognized left and right. And did you guys expect that type of, of response from the public? Not me, you know, not just because it was my first film and, and I didn't really wear the magnitude of it until probably five years ago, because I can still walk out the street right now and be recognized just going about my business because I don't wake up going, I'm Eddie Kendricks. I'm, that's <laughs> so if I can be recognized for a movie I did 23 years ago, practically every day by multiple uh, nationalities, not just black people, mm -hmm. um, I'm like you know, incredibly blessed. And, and I'm kind of glad that I did not know that while I was doing it, because that might have made me a little bit more nervous or um, I was able to just kind of just do my job and then let all those things happen instead of thinking, man, now I knew the weight of becoming Eddie Kendricks and I knew the opportunity that was there. But I was like, let's just do what we do. And I think that separation of all the success came a little bit later. Um, and, and I have to tell you, to be honest, sometimes I resented it. Sometimes I was bitter because, you know, you don't want to be Eddie Kendricks when people call out names, you know, Steve, you know, uh, Jaleel White, is, he's Urkel. Urkel, yeah. You know, how many times has he heard that? I'm sure he would have to embrace that at some sort, uh, some point, or that could really destroy his, his, you know, his spirit if he didn't embrace it. So I'm just, people call me corn and they laugh and stuff like that. And I, Got about corn. Worst thing could happen, you know. <laughs> I can only imagine. I'm sure people would just hear your voice and be like, "Corn," because <laughs> <laughs> you have such a distinctive voice, whether it's singing or just talking. You know, I, I can just imagine that happening left and right all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's a blessing. I mean, might as well talk about some of these scenes. Um, what was your favorite choreography to learn? Oh wow! I think one of my favorite. Well, my girl's amazing. When we learned that, uh, that was amazing because that's the choreography that they do, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I love Eden Asses. But I, losing you in the in the movie, oh. the best moment when we are dancing Thank and mad, <laughs> and the director's capturing how that is playing off, not just as a song sung, mm -hmm. but what is actually happening which I really think that that's why the, the the miniseries did so well. We didn't just do a song and scene, song and scene. He flipped every song, had to go into what was, was happening, the drama at the moment. So I love watching lo Losing You because if you look at every actor, we are doing the choreography, but acting the moment, you know? Uh, and it's just, People always comment about Eddie was like, he had it, he was, he was done. Uh, so I, I love losing you, uh, but, but to be able to do the iconic My Girl choreography and the way that it rolled out in the film with the black and white, remember that? I think that was one of the first times they did that mm, on TV. It turned to where, a color, yep. Yeah, I think that was like a groundbreaking moment. Look at me aging myself. Uh, 
But yeah, those two, two. But we would learn choreography like on the spot. It would be changed. I mean, we would have to be ready, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing, another like you said, uh, the emotional performance was uh, "Ain't Too Proud to Beg." Of course, and David steals the mic, and everybody was like, oh. "I mean, well, everybody except Eddie. Eddie was like, yeah, and everybody was like, what?" <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, we back, uh, we back. Come on, yeah. come on, come on, David. That's always uh, funny to me. Because uh, Tehran would be mad, so that's why. I'm yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but Leon, you got something to say about that? Or you want me to go on? No, keep going, man. What you got? Oh no, well, I'm just giving this man his flowers from the movie. His flowers, you know, <laughs> we've never fully talked about this movie on the podcast, so now I'm about to just unload oh, that's it. That's cool. <laughs> but nah, um, but because uh, this is my second favorite movie of all time, and I. You know, I'm kind of I'm saving it for a moment. What's your burning question? Oh, what do I want to know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I I got like deep rooted questions that don't make sense with just because I'm a fan. <laughs> I get it. So, uh, all right. Well, I asked you about choreography, but what about the song? Not singing the songs per se, but just like the actual singing the actual song in the booth. How was that? Oh, uh, that was amazing. Well, you know. Just my imagination. You think on paper, oh, I'm getting ready to sing Just My Imagination. And then when I'm getting with the director, he's like, oh, no, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're not just going to sing the song, you know? And that was like um, that process of singing Just My Imagination, knowing that Paul was leaving. And, or you know, uh, that's how I had to sing it. Because when you saw it, it had to match, as opposed to me just singing the song, you know? So that was a perfect example of uh, the, he, you know, and he won an Emmy for directing. Um, yes. But but the process of breaking down these iconic songs to fit into our story, I am very, very, very disappointed that there was not a soundtrack. Um, I can't tell you yeah. why, I have no idea what happened, but I, um, you know, to be a singer, like myself and to do this movie and then I don't know what happened, found out we weren't having one, whatever. Um, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Uh, so were you so uh can we talk about yeah the studio process? Were you actually in the studio recording? Were there other temptations around you? Obviously we know all the actors weren't uh, naturally singers. Uh yeah. did they fit you with other singers to to perform yeah. these tracks? Yeah, some of the singers actually sang with the temptations. I know Lewis, you know I mean? Lewis Price Lewis was there. Price. Um so when you hear Dennis's voice and 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 some of some of uh David, yeah, it, it, those were some real temptations that sang with them. And then uh, we had Johnny Britt was our music supervisor. He was incredible just to make sure that we were legit, you know, because, you know, when you're young and if you don't study and you come in the booth and you try to bring a riff or something, that's not period. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to have people that understand that's not what we're doing here. You have to be committed to a certain sound. Right. Um, so. I love the recording pro process. I mean, for me, that's the thing. It was my first movie, really. I've been on a couple TV shows before that, but so I didn't know what I was doing on that end. But give me the recording booth and give me the choreography and the performance. I think it really helped me get over the nerves of uh, the new territory that I was venturing into. So I loved it. There was a moment where I went to a Tower Records <laughs> and I saw an album of Eddie Kendrick's. I forgot which one it was. And it was just very surreal to look at him, I think it was the day before I was doing Just My Imagination and just like hold this album and kind of, I don't believe in transfer, I got transferred and possessed by the spirit, and none of like that happened. But just, you know, wanting to make him proud, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, those are magical moments, man, because before you get on set, right, you do learn the choreography, you're singing all these songs, uh, you're immersing yourself in that world so you're prepared to bring it to life, yeah. Uh, any memories from shoot days in front of the audience or the, the fake audience? Oh, those were like dope because we we literally thought we were the temptation. Right, you guys were the temptation. Yeah. On those days All you those were. People, they're, they're there for us. It was so amazing. Like we're performing and we had, you know, they had tons of extras, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was very unique in itself to, to be playing an icon and have this these people, you know, cheering you on was especially for cloud. I remember for the cloud nine, 
That was when yes. I was four. Yes. Yeah. It was just like, you know, my personal goal as a singer to have all those people was kind of happening at the same time. So the, that was very fun. The whole, the whole experience was a lot of fun, a lot of hard work, but I'm, I remember, and just be, Oba Baba Toon Day, come on, oh, Jennifer yeah. Lewis, yeah. meeting Smokey Robinson. Mm -hmm. um, it was just every day something iconic was happening, you know? And that's what happens when you are a temptation in the movie. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, you did bring up soundtracks earlier and to allude to one of our latest episodes, we did talk about our favorite movie soundtracks. So, what you like in Broadway and uh, tons of movies out, do you have a favorite movie soundtrack? Oh. Who, you love Jones? I mean, you gotta... Uh, a lot of people said love Jones. We did talk about love Jones, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that's pretty iconic up there. Um, what else? I mean... The Dream Girl soundtrack was dope with Beyonce and I mean, you know Eddie Kent, Eddie uh, Murphy. Yes. He was amazing in that. Yeah. I, I just have to say that again. Like I really thought he was going to win the Oscar for that. He 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 was amazing. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those those two come to mind. I'm I'm one of those people that love so much I can never narrow down a favorite. Like yeah, that's a hard one. We yeah. we found that uh, that up uh, the hard way when we did that episode. It was long as hell. We was like, God, there's so many good soundtracks, yes. man. <laughs> so yeah. many. You know, and back in the '90s, wasn't that that was the thing? That was yeah. the nostalgia era that, with that the was soundtracks. The thing yeah. that, that you know broke you maybe as an artist if you was on a soundtrack then you might have had a career you which know? you were on above the, well that brings it full circle you were on above the rim soundtrack right and yeah, that was one of song. our our favorite uh soundtracks from a couple of us mentioned that because uh obviously the pop joint was on there uh pour out a little liquor was you know it just made the whole damn thing for me uh yeah. but yeah, yeah. In, in general i was like oh shoot toronto in there that's dope <laughs> yeah which is crazy because leon was in that movie before yep. I met him. yeah yeah bird yep <laughs> yeah yeah, we, yeah. Now we, full circle, see, look, always yeah, full circle. because nah, a lot of stuff that he's mentioned, a lot of stuff that you're mentioning, we, we talked about on the pod, whether it's top this or top that. So, uh, except for yeah. Temptations, because we waiting on that Temptations verse five heartbeats episode. It's gonna be a doozy. Look, I can't wait to take. No, I ain't gonna say it's gonna take you down, but it's gonna be a good debate. I'll say that it's gonna be a well, good debate. Well, tell me, I don't care, man. Why do you think the five heartbeats is better? He just nah. likes to debate with me, okay. That's no, I want to hear it. I'm, I'm going to hear it. What, why so, is it? Let's, uh, we're, we're waiting. <clears throat> you know, it's actually just what you said, though. I'm just a big fan of Robert Townsend. And so the fact that he was able to create the stories and create the songs, it was like a lot of people think those songs are real songs. The Temptation story, though, obviously is built in with the historic, uh, you know, presence of the Temptation. So it's just two different things. It's not, um, you know, I wouldn't actually compare them. It's just it actually what brought us together was our love for well, for the temptations, I don't know. I don't even know if you like the five heartbeats. So let's just uh, 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 let's just get off it. Do you even like it? Hmm. Who knows? You talking about me or Terry? I'm talking about you. Yeah, because <laughs> I ain't heard you say one good thing. I can talk about all the good things of the temptations, but uh, yeah. all right, we're, we don't want this to be the last podcast, guys. Yes, on, we did a full Robert Townsend appreciation episode. We're good. Yes, but uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna move on real quick. Uh, Teron, you also did something recently for the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, they had a virtual celebration. I just became an ambassador. And I'm really, uh, you know, like I said, if I did not have those mentors, my parents were amazing, but they they weren't like child uh, star parents. They, 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 oh, he sings, you know, that's cool. You know, which I actually love that because they didn't treat me differently because of what I was doing. Um, but if I didn't have those at school or those mentors or those teachers, don't know where I would be. And so I'm very fortunate to be able to give back to uh, uh, disadvantaged young people in, in my area. I live in Los Angeles. So um, when I made the partnership with Boys and Girls Club, they made me their MC to raise some money um, just to keep that going. Because even during COVID, can you imagine if you didn't have a computer or if you didn't, your, your parents had to go to work and you had nowhere to go, the Boys and Girls Club, uh, they were there for those young people and now they're transitioning and I want to help them with whatever financial or uh, getting other mentors together because that's just important to me, you know, that that I raise up people, not just my children, 
but other people, young people to say, here's the mistakes that I made, you know, or the traps that I fell into or the things that I find important and to be able, in Boys and Girls Club, they focus not just on, it's the academics, the character, and it's the health. And I think the problem with us artists is we just focus on our talent, you know? But you gotta teach young people about character, about responsibility, about uh, all those other things that make up a, a true artist. So man, that's what I did. I think that that was last Friday. Yes. Uh, and you, uh, you mentioned you're a father, your parents, I mean, your kids are, you know, really lucky to have a great dad. I think that's been the biggest uh, enlightening thing that I've learned today, just uh, after speaking with you, is that you're so in touch with uh, our people and philanthropy and making sure that you are positive, you know, show up in a positive light. So uh, I'm always drawn to people that, you know, do that consciously. So once again, and I said it a couple of times, we appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that's an, the important thing. I'm glad that you guys had me on just to tell people about more of what I do, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's part of why I started this a little bit, just to uh, talk about the people, give them their flowers, of course, and then kind of just talk about the good stuff that they're doing out in the world. Um, yeah, I'm the one that gets into the drama, usually. <laughs> pretty pretty much. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you have any more karaoke nights coming up before we get out of here? I do. And let's do, let's let's it'll be an exclusive for your listeners because I haven't really revealed the next one. It started out, man, just COVID like fun, like hey, and seeing me have fun as a because I'm a professional singer, but like seeing me just not know what I'm doing and and it really took off. So um, breaking news: the next one will be in June. I don't have the date, but it's going to be Luther. We're going to be Ooh, doing yeah. three of okay. and because okay. we've done the '60s, uh -huh. the '80s. Yep. Motown. Yep. We've got a few, but it's going to be Luther Night. Yeah. But subscribe to YouTube and check out the podcast. And um, and if you write me, I'll always say that. I usually write people back. I usually communicate with people pretty mm -hmm. well on Instagram. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so before we get out of here, any, any message you want to give to the people, whether it's about, you know, your life, whether it's about, you know, just life in general, Entertainment, questions, tips, anything. Just do you have anything else you want to say? I mean, whatever just comes to my mind is be grateful. Like, be grateful. You know, you always want to be in somebody else's shoes. We always want more. We always don't have everything we think we need. But that's a trap, I think. It robs you of what you really do have. Mm -hmm. And I really do believe in my life that being grateful adds to my life and so i always say this this is corny but my life is a pie and all, temptations and broadway and all that that's cherry on a pie my pie is my life my family everything that i create that's already good without chocolate without the stuff on it if you get tripped up on all the accolades and, and all that stuff to put on top you never really build that pie that's good by itself is what i mean so i i, I say have gratitude for what you have don't give up and continue to evolve as your true authentic self because that is the star that people are looking for every time you try to be somebody else or do something somebody else or hide who you are or it is you're you're dimming your own light that only you can shine anyway i do believe that eddie kendrick's and her finding me was because i was just me and i think that that's just what i like to leave with people you know watching today that it, it's difficult you know, but try to, you can't have other people love you if you don't love yourself, you know? Mm. That's a big one. Wise words, man. Okay. Wise words. Keep being yourself because nobody else can do that. So love that. Yeah. 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 And uh, just might as well finish it off. Let everybody know where they can find you. Yeah. Find me Instagram. Instagram, Teron Brooks. Facebook, Teron Brooks. Subscribe on YouTube. And uh, check out the podcast, Honest Answers, on wherever you, you know, watch your podcast. It's on Apple. Uh, podcast, Spotify, uh, and that's that's pretty much it. Those, yep. those. Oh, yep. uh, tomorrow, check out tomorrow as well. Check out tomorrow, yeah. Uh, over and over, keep checking it out because you don't like it. I'm telling you, <laughs> uh, Lee Boy. Let everybody know where they can find you. Well, you can find me on LeeBoyTV.com, at LeeBoyTV on all the socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and also on YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe and show your boys some love. Because I'm being my authentic self, okay? I'm doing that. Mm, okay. I ain't going to never change. Okay. 
<laughs> but I, mean, I might change a little bit, you know, with the times and all that. But yeah, evolve, bro, evolve, yeah, yeah, yeah. evolve in this yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you could find me on Twitter and Instagram at KVNG Prime Time. Uh, actually, almost like Tehran, I did uh, I did something with a charity this past week. I did uh, Music is Unity Foundation. Uh, me and PB, I'm gonna call him PB because we tight like that now. Now, mm. uh, <laughs> me and Philip Bailey and uh, Holly Robinson, Pete, uh, and others. We kind of had like a uh, foundation just to raise awareness for foster kids. So mm -hmm. uh, we kind of want to raise awareness for people that kind of age out the system and kind of just thrown in the world, especially COVID. It's, it's, it's rough out there. So I wanted to uh, kind of raise awareness for that. And um, also you can follow us at the Prime Nostalgia Pod on Instagram. And, uh, you know, just, just be looking out. We're coming up to our 100th episode celebration, which is going to be great. And uh, without further ado, from me, from Libor, from Tehran, I got to say, prime time is all the time, and we out. Hey.